This is an unusual item and it's got a little story behind it. It is an underwater lure light. The idea is, and I'm not an expert in fishing, you guys can keep me right in this. The idea is that you throw it into the water at night and the fish are attracted towards it and it has a long lead, it has a little switch part the way along the cable and it has a couple of crocodile clips to hook onto a battery. So I shall hook onto a battery and show you this. This is available in a few different colours, each I suppose for a specific style of fish. Uh, this one is blue, just because I thought blue would be quite nice. I wanted to try it in the local lake with jellyfish, but there are no jellyfish at the moment. Uh, I shall turn it on and it lights bright blue. Uh, this thing is designed for 12 volts. It self-regulates at up to 11 volts. The current gradually increases and then it starts kicking back as the regulation sets in. It will aim for about uh, 4 watts. So it's designed to cover the sort of general sort of charge state of a sealed lead acid battery. Although you could use lithium these days as well. I should turn this back off. So is it, is it good sportsmanship to do things like this? I'm not really sure. However, what is unsporting is that when I bought this from eBay, the, I got the notification, it's been shipped, and I wonder if it was through a third party that they shipped it, and they had to ship something, because initially an envelope arrived, and it, I opened it up thinking, what's this? It feels really light. There was a cork inside, and I worked out that it was this item that was missing from the batch of orders I'd made recently, so I contacted them and said, uh, this cork just arrived and they said oh yeah we sorry we ship item it is on way yes and uh, that cork is gift so they basically fulfilled the requirement of shipping something out so i wasn't expecting this to arrive and i was carefully monitoring the uh, the point at which we could open the dispute if it didn't arrive because it took a very long time it finally arrived unexpectedly through the post so um i can tell you actually by turning this on again well, I can tell you that the voltage it starts lighting at is just over 7 volts, so uh, is that right? Hold on, let me just let me just double check this. Let's get evidence to prove what I say. Um, I've got the bench power supply here, I turn it down, it starts to glimmer, it's dropped down to about 1 milliamp, so about 8 volts. So, based on that, I would say that, especially with the switching rig layer as well, 8 divided by about three, I reckon it's multiples of three, 2.6 volts sounds about right for a blue LED at that level. I reckon it's a cluster of three LEDs in series, but in this, each of these strips, which has 24, uh, 12 LEDs, uh, there'll be four sets in parallel. And likewise, this one in the end also has four. So it's basically uh, three in series, but four sets of those in parallel on each of these circuit boards. It adds up to quite a few LEDs. I didn't actually count the LEDs. That was most remiss of me. Uh, hold on, let me see. One. Seven, eight, nine. Nine. Well, that's quite a lot of LEDs. Nine times the 12 LEDs. It's 108 LEDs. Uh, four watts divided by 108 equals... About 37 milliwatts per LED. They're just running about 10, 11-ish um, milliamps each. That's all right, actually. But the overall heat in this package will get quite hot. However, where would the water get in? Would it get in at this point here? It does seem quite well sealed. We'll open it up. Or would it get in here? This, what looks like silver tape, is actually just printed on, I think. Uh, they've basically, well, deposited on. There's no... It f feels initially like tape, but you can't get your finger underneath it, so it's a coating on the surface. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this off just by squeezing it. I shall give a go. If it doesn't come off, I shall use the vice of knowledge. I'm sure it's making the crunching noises. Is it the plastic or is it my fingers? Oh no, it's coming out. Oh, and there is a little regulator. Oh, they've gone to decent efforts. Look at that. They've put sealant round the cable coming in. This is good, a silicone-ish type sealant. And also here, that's quite neat. Uh, what's the little regulator? This is where I make a complete dick of myself by not being able to read the number in that because it'll be tiny. It's not too bad. 1350. Uh, it's a little uh, buck regulator. These are, are these two cent resistors? Uh, 0.5 ohm and 0.5 ohm, so uh, they're probably in parallel to give 0.25. Um, but I shall check this out. Let's dig in. Let's get into this. 
we shall scrape out the schmoo and get into this and see if we can pull any more out. Not that, you know, there's not going to be an awful lot, really. And here it is, a series parallel array of LEDs. Am I going to burst something here? I'll just pull the cable. Oh, I burst something. This isn't surprising, is it? Big Ham Fisted Clive. Uh, is that sealed onto the side then, or is it just... Some of these tend to be friction fit. I should stay more central, shouldn't I? What if I squeeze it a bit more? What if I... No, I was going to bang it on the table. That would be deafening if you get headphones on, so it's not a good idea, is it? What's the... Oh, no, it's moving, it's moving. Oh, it's got that wee thing. There's that wee lip at the edge that always stops it coming out. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to pause momentarily while I bang this really loudly. Right, well, that's the diode pulled off and the inductor broken. I'm not doing very well. I'm just going to go full-on destruction here. That probably also made a loud noise in the microphone. Sorry. Up. Let's get this out. Destruction style. This is a complete disassembly. And I think, to be honest, that, oh, just possibly, I shall get the soldering iron on and I shall desolder the end here so we can actually take a look inside. I don't think there's going to be anything in here, but it'll be interesting to see the configuration. Actually, I can see the configuration. There is nothing in here. There's the regulator. Uh, it's, I don't think there's any resistors or anything in the back of these. Right. One moment, please. I'm just going to probe this. That was quite hard to reverse engineer because initially I thought I'd located the chip, the 1350, and it turns out I had. But I wasn't getting continuity from the negative to the negative pin the chip or the positive to the positive pin the chip. If I'd looked at the meter instead of just listening for continuity, I'd have discovered that on the back of this circuit board, on the other side of this one, are four diodes, short key diodes, forming a bridge direct far, which means that this lamp module, it's a universal module, it can be used on uh, AC or DC. So it's, it's probably just, you know, a standard 12 volt lamp that has been adapted for this application, which would make sense, particularly since really all they've done is change the base. But the chip in question, the 1350, turns out to be, I'm not sure if it's a mass copy, I don't know, it's one of those chips that everybody has their own version. It turns out to be a little buck regulator, and the circuitry is more or less as they've got it, but it's quite odd. Uh, I shall zoom down a bit. Um, so yes, more or less this circuitry, except they swap the position of the inductor and the LEDs. Uh, it's interesting they show a three LEDs in series here, which kind of fits that. And there's also a capacitor across that. I get the feeling this might be designed for uh, MR16 style lamps. But uh, yes, I shall show you the schematic shortly. But here is the chip. Here are the current sense resistors, two half ohm resistors in parallel. Uh, there was the inductor before I snapped it off, and there was the Schottky die before I snapped it off. The power supply is a smoothing capacitor, and then a little capacitor here across the LEDs. That's more or less it. Let me bring in the schematic. Here is the schematic. Incoming supply. The bridge rectifier made of discrete diodes on the other side. That smoothing capacitor, just basically a local buffer capacitor. Going straight to the 1350 chip, it has the positive negative as the current sense and the LX. The LX switches to the negative rail via a little internal MOSFET. I think it's a MOSFET, is it? It would probably be. It's a MOSFET. This is interesting because they've got a little comparator here uh, for sensing the uh, current sense resistors. Normally, the current sense resistors would actually go through LX and then to the zero volt rail. But in this instance, they've actually put them in the other end of the circuitry, probably to keep the pin down count down on this chip. Uh, so we get the current sense resistors here. Uh, and the voltage across them being measured being between the positive rail and current sense. We've got the inductor, we've got the LEDs, and that little smooth capacitor across the LEDs, and then we've got a shot key diode in the opposite direction. And the sequence of operation is this. The chip turns on the MOSFET, and it effectively bridges LX to the zero-volt rail here, the negative. Current starts flowing through the resistors, and it flows through the inductor, building up a magnetic field. Initially, the inductor will push back and it will limit the current. It also flows through the LEDs. Then this uh, current sense 
detects this at a threshold of current flow through and it turns uh, the LX off, it, it leaves it floating, it switches away from the negative rail. At that point, this had been positive and this had been negative. Now the magnetic field collapses and this end goes positive and this end goes negative and when that happens, it finds another current path which is through the LEDs, through that Schottky diode, the free field diode and back through the current sense resistor to the other end of the inductor. It's a very straightforward circuit. It's, it was a lot easier to explain than it was to reverse engineer, but that's a minor technicality. That is the curse of these all-white circuit boards, particularly when it's actually dotting backwards and forwards between the layers. The LEDs on the side of the unit have a couple of formats. Well, there's actually three different types of circuit boards. Uh, the standard format for them all is that you've got the positive at the bottom, which is uh, down at the bottom here. And it goes through uh, four separate circuits of three LEDs. And there's a tiny little track coming up the side here. And there's a tiny little track going up the side there to connect the negatives. And that means that uh, there is a common bus going up to the top via another circuit board. But the negative for all the standard circuit boards is fed from the top end. And the positive is fed from the bottom. The other oddity here, we've got the uh, positive and negative here, but it's actually going through the circuit board, I think. Actually, no, i am just suddenly realised something. It is kind of going through the circuit board there. It is. It's actually bridging onto the other side. So when it's doing that, uh, it's transferring. It's got pads on the other side, uh, tracks on the other side. It is trans doing the same as this, but it's also going up to two pads up here to transfer the positive and negative both onto the actual, the top circuit board. The top circuit board itself is a, just a rhythmic pattern of LEDs. It is a common positive that goes around the whole outside and then it goes through each of these grouped LEDs and then there's plated through hole onto the other side under each of the uh, negative connections. So it's just four circuits of three LEDs in parallel. That's very straightforward. Again, it didn't take long to explain. It took a lot less time to explain than it took to reverse engineer. That is an understatement. So that's interesting. The question is, I could get this going, but even though I've ripped the inductor off, I could just put a resistor on and I could actually uh, or a couple of resistors. I could get the LEDs just going straight off DC. But the question is, are these effective? Do they actually lure the fish and why would the fish head towards the light? I have come across a uh, in salmon farms, they had some sort of thing. It might have actually been for rogue uh, things in the salmon pools that they were attracted to pulsing flashing lights in some way. Maybe it was the thing that's how they found their way to the actual salmon was the reflection of the scales. But that uh, attracted them that way. But I don't know. Um, they do them in blue. They do them in green. I'm not sure what colours fish respond to. But there we go. It's an interesting little thing. Let me know if you've ever used one of these uh, LED lures and whether it actually worked or not.